doubled and tripled after that. And really, it just never went backwards from that. So we just we give God all the glory for that. And we know that our church is special. And this is a church founded on love. And that all comes from the very roots of um, this Amen. church. Amen. Amen. Special thanks to our founding pastor, my dad, Pastor George Pogue Sr., who's here today. And, and my, of course, my mom, Nancy Pogue. Um, let's give them a hand. Yeah. <laughs> They don't like a lot of attention drawn to them, but yet and sometimes it's appropriate to do so. Amen. Yes. And we know that it was God in them. But what they did was showed us how to be consistent, yes. showed us how to walk in faith. Somebody has to demonstrate it for us, right? They showed us how not to quit. They showed us how to love and to be there as a family. 43 years they've demonstrated that and so we owe them a lot so we thank we thank them for, um, for for what they've done the church was founded in 1978 and uh, we were in uh, my parents living room for a while and then we graduated to this and uh, um, so we'd like to thank them also do you want to do this one yep special thanks to our dear brother bill funk back there he um, he's just has been a total blessing for as long as I've known him. Um, he has the Bill Funk sign designs. Um, let me get my spot here. Okay, he made our handicapped parking spaces out there. He did all of the signs. So anything you see on any of these doors, Brother Bill Funk had a hand in all of that. So he's very creative. And he's always done everything out of his heart. Um, the Sister Ruth's name on the building out there, I was, I was telling our dear sister here the other day, uh, we come home to that and we seen that and honestly it just like touched our hearts and we just cried. I said, oh my gosh, Brother Bill, you just, you knocked it out of the park. That was so awesome and it's so special because you know everybody knows how Ruth was to us. She was our dear sister and we do miss her. Um, the ribbon cutting banner that we're going to be cutting this morning, Brother Bill Funk made that for us. Um, and he's helping with our sound absorbing panels. So when we go over into the gymnasium today, it's, there's going to be some echo, but that's only going to be for a very short period of time. We've already got this stuff ordered, praise the Lord. And Bill says he's going to hang them up for us. And I just want to add one little extra thing on that. Um, my husband. So I think it was when um, his mom and dad went over with him and uh, Nancy said, you know, about the sound in there, it was bothering her ears. And then, and we already knew that it, it was very evident that there was an issue there. But I think after that, it just really sparked him even extra. You know what? I need to do whatever it is I got to do to make this right. So Brother Bill um, got involved right away with my husband. And honestly, Bill, you'll never know how much that meant to me. Um, you was very much a big part in that, a big help to my husband, because you know there's lots of questions, there's lots of things going on, and we don't know anything about building a building or anything, thanks to Gary, Gary knows a whole lot too, um, so there's just a whole lot of yeah. things that you just never even realize, but Bill was just so instrumental in helping my husband with that. Yeah. Um, Bill and Ron Schwartz will be putting the basketball lines on the court, which we know is no small task. And there's been some things there Brother Ron has tried, you know, in painting and stuff. He took little samples and did it, and then we realized the paint likes to make these little lines out. And he's like, well, that's not going to work. So they're going to do something there. And I know whatever they do, it'll be done with the spirit of excellence, and it'll be right on. So I'm looking forward yes, to that. Yes, yes. And all gymnasiums have echoes. All of them. That's how that's why that's, you, you go to any gym. And so we just want to uh, take it to an extra level with these absorption panels um, because uh, we feel that it, there'll be wedding receptions over there and all sorts of things. So um, we're going to try to make that the best we can. Another special thanks to uh, Brother Ron Swartz. Um, he's been a very big help. Um, he's been, uh, as far as the church side of things, giving us um, good wisdom. He, he knows how to do a lot of things. He's very talented. And there's several um, areas that he has um, really helped us because I've never been involved in anything like this. And so, um, so thank you, brother, for that. And uh, it was also Brother Ron that tracked down and located the basketball equipment and the um, volleyball. I think it's out of Texas. He found a place out of Texas that just fit perfect for us and ordered it, got it here. 
And I've got all the pieces here, so thank you, brother, for that. Also want to give a special thanks to my brother, George Pogue Jr. He's fishing today, or else he'd be here. Um, he, uh, uh, and also Carmen about a tree service. Um, George was in charge of the whole problems, uh, the whole problem solving, you say that. But the um, side of the church, the church's side of it, uh, my brother George handled it all. He dealt with the scary engineers. And I could just go pray for people <laughs> and stuff. And uh, of course, um, uh, he just uh, did a wonderful job for us. And, and uh, he's blessed us tremendously. If you look around the grounds, if you see new planting, like out back there, you'll see new arborvita and a rock bed. You can walk around the grounds too later and look at it all. That's all um, coming about a tree service. Um, giving and, and blessing us. So we'd like to thank my brother for that. Also, special thanks to Brother Jay Fisher. He's fishing too. I put Jay in there because Jay and Darlene have, have been, but in particular, Jay has been my right-hand man for 16 years. And uh, um, for years I've been talking about a building, for years. And Jay was the one guy who would listen to me ramble and he never shot me down he never said well you can't do it he was just so encouraging I mean and, and if I'd say something sometimes I had harebrained ideas sometimes and Jay would be like okay we'll try it you know and then he'd have to come back and tell me well that wasn't too smart it's okay well, at least you try it you know but but he was all in from the get-go and uh and of course Jay like I said he's he's been Anything that breaks down, anything that needed to be done for all these years, he has been right there for us. So I want to give him a special thanks, too. And I'd like to um, also um, give a special thanks to Sister Darlene Fisher and all the other sisters that have um, picked up where Ruth left off. And there are new cleaning crew now. And um, they're also helping out with the new building. They got it ready over there. And you guys are a total blessing to us because it's a lot. I mean, you know, we would really be lost without our cleaning crew. And Sister Rose, she, she hammered it down for all those many years all by herself because, like he said in the past, she didn't play nice. She didn't like, she had her way of doing it, and that's the way it was going to be. So nobody could come in and alter how she wanted it. But you know what? Everybody was okay with that. We loved her yeah. just for that. And we said, hey, you want to do it all by yourself? You just go ahead. She did it at her convenience. And, but let me tell you, her convenience is really early in the morning. Because, <laughs> like, I would get up early and I'd come out, you know, all sleepy. I had to make my coffee. I'd say, oh, my goodness, she's over there already. Yeah. But that's just how Sister Ruth was. Yeah. And now, Sister Darling, Darlene, you have a crew of how many? five ladies now so it took five to replace Ruth <laughs> but um, I just want to say you guys are all doing a fantastic job and we so appreciate everything you're doing yes and sister Ruth uh, served the church church faithfully um, like Leslie said she was her own person that's what a church is about we all have different personalities you know we need those tough-minded independent-minded people that go out and charge ahead we need those people we need people that, that are talkers. We need people that are listeners. We need everybody together makes up a really good blend. And, <clears throat> and she did provide a toughness and, and, and a love, a love. Um, when we had to do some uh, social distancing during the COVID, <clears throat> that, was, <clears throat> that was hard on Sister Ruth yes. because she was always the lady at the door greeting everyone. And, and the reason she greeted them so well is because she prayed for each and every one of you. She prayed for you. And so when you came in that door, you were her answered prayer. You were her answered prayer. And, and she just, you could see, she made everybody feel welcome. And I think what made Sister Ruth so special was Sister Ruth was an accomplished, if you say, if you say Christian. She had served the Lord for many, many years. And she had gotten rid of all the stuff out of her life that a lot of times most people struggle with, right? And, but she wasn't holier than thou. But someone of, of Sister Ruth's stature that would accept and love everybody, it meant a lot. And, and after she went home to be with the Lord, I started hearing people tell me how she, uh, she impacted them. 
There are people in this church that because they met Sister Ruth when they came in the first couple times, they continue to stay. They might not be here otherwise if she hadn't impacted them the way she did. So um, <clears throat> we, we're honoring her and, and uh, the building is named after her. Typically, you know, this isn't something that we don't do this lightly. And we know that Jesus Christ is our Lord, right? I like to say it this way. And if someone gives you a compliment for something that you're doing for the Lord, let's say someone compliments me and says, hey, Pastor, that was a good sermon. I, I don't say, it's not me, it's all God. It's God. Because that's deflecting a compliment, and it deflates the people that are, they know it's God, right? And so I say, thank you for seeing God in me. Thank you for believing in God's call in my life. Thank you for seeing that, that, that God is using me. Because who he calls, he equips. And so this is what this is about. We, we, Sister Ruth is one of us, but she was the epitome of a servant. She never had a title. But yet she did more things than anybody probably in the church. Her title was to, to love on people. Now she was a greeter, if you want to call that a title. And, uh, but just the way she, she served and she loved and she was faithful. We want to, we want that, that spirit of excellence that was in Sister Ruth. We want to be, be reminded of our dear sister and have it inspire us to, to not get off track ourselves. And so that's what that's all about. And I know her family's here today and, and they said that Sister Ruth probably wouldn't like her name being so big, but that's tough. She can't do nothing about it now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I know in heaven, I believe she's getting word and say, hey, you know what? Your, your church is honoring, honoring your life, your faithful servanthood to, to them. And, and uh, I believe she's getting a big smile because we're always going to be a family, even in eternity. We're always um, freedom in Christ church to me. We're always a spiritual family. <clears throat> and so did you want to say anything? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, even when we went to visit her there um, towards the end, she had her list out there. She, she was still praying for her, and, you know, her family has always been so special to her, so she definitely had all her family members in prayer, and um, she would always tell us good word of, yeah. you know, when some were doing really good in college and this and that. I mean, she was just so full of life. Even, even down to the end, she was still very, very full of life and very full of love. But she definitely prayed for every single person that came into the church. Yeah, so that was yeah. pretty awesome. And I started to say with the COVID, um, so what Sister Ruth would do is she'd sit in her chair sideways out in, uh, yeah. looking back towards the, the uh, doorway. And when people come in, she'd be like, like that. And like I said, I know she probably didn't appreciate the social distancing, but she didn't give me a hard time. And because uh, um, she understood, she was a team player. Yes. Amen. Was. And sometimes pastors, we have to consider the whole group and everybody's feelings. And, and so we, I think we did a pretty good job getting through all that. And, and, uh, and the Lord will help us as we go forward. But um, I'll, I'll forever remember her just looking for people to come in and, and giving them a, a nice big wave. And so we do have Sister Ruth's family here today. Could you stand up and so we can give you applause? Sister Ruth's family's here, the whole crew here. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, do any of you, would any of you like to say a few words? Yes? Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I'm a young son, and I just wanted to say thank you to the church. Um, she did love you all um, as much as she loved us as her children. Um, but she was a humble ser servant, and she never wanted any recognition. So yeah, he has to answer for that name. <laughs> <laughs> but she did um, try to make herself um, as loving and forgiving as Jesus himself. That, that's what she really wanted to do. So um, just thank you all for this, and the fact that her name is going to be out there is, is inspiring to us all. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Was there anyone else in her family that wants to say anything? That was, that was awesome. Thank you for saying that. You're good. Okay. Also, we have other special guests here, WB Prime. Uh, would you stand up? And uh, Brother Gary's crew, stand up, WB Prime, all of you. And uh, 
Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let, let me tell you a little some, something about them, then we'll have uh, Gary come on up here and, and say a few words. Uh, they are um, professionals at every, every level, and they have done such an awesome job. Um, nice people. If you have to ask them questions or, or, or you don't understand things that probably you should understand, they're patient, they're kind with you, and they know what they're doing. And uh, Gary Whitfield uh, Sr. and I, we go back a long way. We grew up together, and uh, it was always our desire for him to build this building. And uh, through the years, uh, we, we, tried, we just were trying. We talk a big game, I guess. <laughs> and uh, um, I remember, I don't know if Gary remembers, a few years ago, we were at a Common Valley Tree Service event, and I said, Gary, we're going to get that building built one day. I don't want you to think that, you know, we're, we're just pull, fooling you around. He said, I know you will, John. I know you will. And uh, we did. Amen. And so thank you guys for all your hard work. And we'll have Gary come up if he'd like to say a few words and, and even introduce his, his team that he has here with him. The reason why we like the mic is because it is recorded, so that way we can hear it. And also, we have people back in the sound room. They can't hear anything unless you talk in this mic, so I just wanted to tell you that. This is going to be short, but uh, <laughs> not a big talker, but uh, I just want to thank you guys for letting us sh show you what we can do. And uh, I definitely want to thank the guys that are here. A couple didn't make it, but... You want to stand up, Walt? Right. 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 We're not the reason they are. So, just want them to be thanked. We'd also like to thank Brian Angle, the drafter. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you all. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, we have a gift for, for each of uh, um, WMB Prime, so we want to give you a little, just, it's just a little token of our thank you. You guys can work for us any day. And so, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. How about the other crew members on here? They can get theirs later. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened. That's, that's all right. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Fishing, yeah. <laughs> they're fishing. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. There's really important ones that didn't make it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So Gary, you did a wonderful job yeah. with her. Yeah, it was nice having um, Gary be able to, and Dwight be able to build the, the building um, because they're friends. You know, they're, um, they look after you. And uh, there's been many occasions where Gary just ate the cost on something and, and helped us along in the beginning. And, and uh, he'll never tell you that, but I could tell you that. So um, he looked after us and he made sure it was right. And he kept saying, John, if there's something that's not right, you just tell me, we'll get it right. And uh, so i um, thankful for that. And I know uh, Brian's sitting there, our floor guy. And uh, so stand up again once, brother. How much is it? I'm going to embarrass you. Yeah. Let's give him another hand. <laughs> Thank you. It, when you see the gym floor, it's beautiful, and Brian laid that whole floor. He had a little bit of help from here and there, but even all the floor in the whole building. But the, the gym floor is just in strips like about this long, right? About this wide. And he, every piece by piece by piece, he just, uh, just uh, laid them in there perfect. And, and uh, he's assured me if we ever have any trouble with the floor, he'll come back and help us out. And uh, so... Um, thank you, brother. Thank you all. Thank all of you for doing such a good job. Yeah, and I also want to throw out there, Brother Gary um, Whitfield. I I also went to school with him, so I remember him from growing up all throughout our years and stuff. And so it it, it was awesome because I mean Gary would even call me on the phone, <clears throat> ask me questions. You know, anytime I ever had a question for him. He was always there. So it was different and it was special, you know, dealing with friendships, people that really cared. It wasn't just like a normal business dealing that you would have with Joe Schmo down the road who doesn't care about you. Like legitimately, mm -hmm. we felt the love in this project mm -hmm. right here. And I know, Gary, you have a spirit of excellence mm -hmm. and I know it means everything to you that everything be spot on just right. And so we thank you for that. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you all. Okay. Are you ready for this special announcement? I've been saying we're going to have a special announcement. Um, coming next year, we will have a school here at the uh, church. Woo! Amen. So, yeah. Um, it, it'll be uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. And uh, the name of the, uh, the school is Freedom Christian Academy. I like to say, amen, yeah. But I like to say uh, Freedom Spirit Field Word of Faith Christian Academy. <laughs> so, um, but it's going to be a very, very special um, school. We've already been working on it. We already have our team assembled, uh, the, big, the bulk of the team, and I'm going to introduce those team members to you. Um, there's going to be lots of love, lots of structure, um, lots of uh, spiritual base. Uh, Pastor Dane's going to handle the spiritual side of it. And uh, you know sort of how, how it is with the summer camps, with the Kid Nation program. The kids come in and they sing and they worship God and they learn how to connect with Him. It's not going to be just a dry, dry um, atmosphere at all. And almost every child I talk to, you ask them what their best part of the summer camp was, which we did for 10 weeks all, all summer long. We're going to do it again too, right? So um, they love the Bible time. Yes. And they did a lot of fun things. I mean, we got a zip line down there now. <laughs> so they went to, to the zoo, they went all different places, but they'll tell you that they love the Bible time. Those little kids need to hear, hear um, the truth of God's Word and learn how to connect with the Lord on that level. And that's because Pastor Dane, he is so anointed, anointed for that position. He's our youth pastor, children and youth pastor. And he is like so awesome because he can get up here and he can preach a message. You can have someone 90 years old in here and you can have a little child. And I'm telling you, everybody can get something out of it. And he's funny. He just, he just wraps it in a really awesome package. And that yeah. Kid Nation program, it is awesome. And word of faith, I mean, it's great because, you know, we want our kids to be victorious, just like they were singing about we're going to see a victory. And you know what? Today's a victory for us at Freedom in Christ Church. There is so much good stuff coming Amen. our way. Amen. So we believe this is the Lord pushing us out, putting his vision in our heart. We have a saying here that we don't do things because we can do it. And we don't do things because someone else is doing it. We do what the Lord tells us to do. And you can pretty much see the way the world's going now and just all this stuff going on out there. Um, we want to 
be more and do more for the kingdom of God and be, be able to offer more for, for the families of the church. We're going to start with the families of the church, of course. We're going to start with any, fam any family, family member that wants their child to go. Um, just come see us and we'll talk about it. If, you, if you're already happy where they're at, we understand that completely. We understand that completely. This isn't um, anything about trying to take you out of something that you're happy with. But if you feel we can fill a need and, and fill a void, then, then come see us. And uh, but my, my goal, our goal, is to, you know, how, how sometimes the kids can get lost in these bigger, bigger schools. They can be a small fish in a, in a big pond, according to the world system. Every child in this school will be a big fish in a little pond. That's right. Amen. And they'll be taught that they're special. And uh, we, we are 100% word of faith, spirit-filled. They're going to know their creator. They're going to know their God. Amen. We're going to be very animate about that. And so the curriculum that we're going to use is called the ACE curriculum, and it's, that's Accelerated Christian Education. Um, I've heard the average GPA of its graduates are, are 95.7. And so um, you can learn more about this program if you, if, if you need to. Um, it took me a while to, to hear about it and get used to it, but once I saw it and, and saw it um, demonstrated, and uh, we have several people in this church that have gone through that program. And every one of them either taught it or gone through it. And every one of them said they love it 100%. And so that's going to be the curriculum that we use. Um, there's going to be four areas of study for the high schoolers. They, they can have the honors classes, um, the college prep, the general studies, and then the vocational um, studies. And so um, we're, we're working real hard towards um, getting this together. There's a lot to learn. That's why we're giving ourselves a year. And so we can't learn it, in, learn it in a year. Something's wrong with us. Right? Yeah, we'll, we'll learn it. And so we're already connected in with the ACE um, program and, and ministry. And, and so we have all the resources that they can offer to help us. Um, we have visited um, two ACE schools already. Uh, Mallersville, they have like 59 students and they're, they're very, very impressive. Um, the teacher at Mallersville, he says our, our children go on to be um, lawyers, um, doctors, go into professional careers. Some of them go start their own business. I mean, th they're successful w when they leave there. And, um, and so we also went to Path Valley. Path Valley has a, a school and about 27, I think 27 to 29 students. It's a little smaller than that school, so we learned about that. And Monday we're going back out. The team's going back out to um, Mallersville because some of the team hasn't seen how that's been, how that runs. And so um, we did assemble a team, and uh, Sister Anaya will be the program director and head classroom supervisor. And so um, that same spirit of excellence and that same drive that she has in the summer camps, the, the school will have her fingerprints all over it as far as that goes. Uh, pastor Dane will be the school pastor and guidance counselor, and he'll also be cross-trained to to assist in the classrooms. In order to assist in the classrooms, you have to go through training, and, and um, so the, he's gonna do that. Um, Brother Lowell Carey is going to be the administrator slash principal, and he's also gonna be trained to um, assist in the classroom. Coming up here this fall, I believe Brother Lowell will be going to Kentucky. I think it's Kentucky, and he's gonna be down there for a while. Um, learning all that administrative things. And so it's important that he does that and he can fulfill that need because I got enough to do, right? You know, I, I can't let anything take me off of what, of what is, is going on here. So pastors aren't meant to do it all. And so he's going to bless us. And Lowell's very talented, very gifted. And he'll, we'll have no problem with him doing that. And so also Sister uh, Brooke Garrett is going to be a classroom supervisor. Is Brooke here? Sister Brooke, all right, so welcome on, welcome on the team. We're glad to have her. She'll be trained. Brother Bob Musgrave. Yeah, let's give him a hand. We're Brother Bob in the back. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be a classroom supervisor. Now, uh, Brother Bob went through this program, I think, 6th through 12th grade, pretty much, and, and, and he just loves it. And so he, he brings a lot of experience with it. Brother Lowell was in the similar type program as well in school. And so, and then, of course, Sister Leslie is going to be the office manager and anything to do with bookkeeping, filing, uh, administrative things, Leslie's going to be handling that for us. And also, she's, she's going to be trained to um, assist in the classrooms as well. And so, 
that's the class, that's the team right now. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, my job, my job is everything we do here is led by the Holy Spirit. And so this is a this is an extension of the of the church. And so the office of the pastor is 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 the office that oversees it all. And so I'll oversee everything. And and uh, I told him I'm a team player, and so we'll we'll work together. But if ever I feel it down deep inside of me that we're not going to do it, we're just not going to do it, right? So and they honor that. But mostly uh, I don't I don't know how often that'll happen. But um, so that that's going to be our team. And so we're thankful for that. God's been faithful to us. Amen. At this time, let's have Sonona. Sister Sonona is going to come up and sing, and then I have just a short message, and then we'll cut that ribbon. Last year, about this time, the Lord gave me a word, and, uh, you know, all this stuff in the world starts to happen, and, and um, it should get your attention a little bit, things that you see. Um, I noticed that this world is different, so different now. I've been here 16 years. I don't even reckon, it's not even the same country than when I first started. It's not even the same country, it, it's different. The, the, the thinking's different, um, there's a lot of uh, movements out there that are anti-God, and, and you know one thing that they, they're all, they always come after the children, always. Always the children are their, their target. They feel if they can, they can get the younger generation, then they can get their godless things going on. But you know what we say, not our children, amen? And as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, and we're going to honor Him. And so, um, but the Lord told me, He said this, He said, no matter what happens from here on out, the, the world is, is changing. Um, the assignment is the same for the church. Preach the gospel and be the light. He said, but our methods will be changing a little bit, or He'll be adding things to us. And, and uh, these things are added to us, like the school and, and the building and the summer camps that we do, so that we can meet the demands of the world, the, the lost and dying world out there. They need a place to come. They need a place of refuge. They need lighthouses. And we're one of many of God's lighthouses. And you are all a part of it. You are all a part of it. That's the great thing about being in the family of God. You don't have to sit on the sideline and wish that you could do something for God. The Bible says God has called each and every one of you to do something. He's gifted you. You're wonderfully and fearfully made. You just got to hook up with God. And you got to trust him and, and, and invest in, in him and, and get into a church and, and, and trust that God will use you in that place. And, and you'll see your gifts will start to come out. And you'll be a viable part of, of, of a great uh, church. Now, <clears throat> the, there's a concept, the world uses it too, but I mean, we, we definitely operate in it. It's called the concept of synergism. Synergism is, uh, is this. Say all of us together, I don't know how many's here, there's a lot of you here today, but uh, all, of, all of you working by yourself, doing something, cannot equal the, the amount and the success of all of us working together, doing something, right? Individuality does not cut it. We're individuals, but yet we're part of a body, we're part of a team. And so when we gather in love and unity and harmony and we all operate together, I'm telling you what, great things, great things will happen and, and God will do things that we never thought we could do. So I believe as a church, God wants us to get so far outside of the box that, that, we, that we don't even know where the box is anymore. Amen. We're out there and we're trusting in him. That's, that's the true live life of a Christian. The life of a Christian is not sitting around doing nothing. Or just, you know, rules without a relationship equals rebellion. We're not religious here. We're Christians. We got the fire of the passion of Jesus Christ in our belly. The same passion that led Jesus Christ to the cross is in us. We have the power of God to set people free. We, there's nothing like it when you lead someone to the Lord. There's no other feeling in the world when you help some poor soul that doesn't know what God is and doesn't know that God loves them and they think that they've already sinned too much and, they, and all they ever seen was a bunch of stuffy religious people. There's just something about it when you can say, look at me, I'll, let me show you the God I know. Let me give you my testimony. Let me show you where God brought me from. See, that's the, that's the fire of Christianity. There's no boredom in Christianity. If you're bored in your Christian walk, it's because you're trying to live half in the world and half in the church. We got to be on fire for God. 
And let the world see, let the world see a, a fire in us and a, and a light in us so that they can be rescued. I tell people all the time, if they're bored in their Christian walk, you know, you, we, can, we can go, I used to say, I'll make a joke about that, but I guess I will. We can go up to, to, to the Chambersburg Mall, but, well, I'm moving up the mall because there's not many people up there, but go to Hagerstown <laughs> Mall, and we can start witnessing. Start telling people about what God did for us. You won't be bored very long. You might get punched in the eye. Maybe. <laughs> but at least you won't be bored. You might get cursed at. You might get called all kinds of names. But at least you'll be walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? That's where the joy is, walking in the footsteps of Jesus. That's where the passion is. Never in a million years could I ever do what I do up here if God didn't put the passion in me to do it. Because I was a loner. That's my buddy, buddy Brian, he'll tell you, Brian Siler. I was a loner. If you looked up in the dictionary, loner, my picture was in there. But one day God said, I need you to stop being a loner and I need you to do something. Uh, and, and I said, well, what do you need me to do? Well, I want you to be a pastor. I'm like, uh, you got the wrong guy. See, I don't speak in front of people. I'm the guy that sits in the back. I'm the guy that slips in and slips out. He said, no, you're the guy. I know who I made you to be, and you're the guy. And who I call, I will equip you to do it. You see, being a pastor isn't about being the best at anything. It's about being the one who prays the most. It's about being the one who studies the most. It's about being the one who gifted by God to recognize gifts in the church and let them flourish. That's what it's about. And when you walk this life out, it is the most beautiful, spectacular, self, I mean, just most fulfilling life that you could ever live. But you have to give God a chance. A lot of people sell God short because all they know is the world's way. Well, you know what? The world has taught you wrong about God. You know where we get our information about God? We get it through the Word of God. A lot of people get their information about God through TV, Hollywood. Don't let them tell you about God. And Christians. You know, when I was younger, we used to like to watch that show, uh, Sanford and Son. Anybody remember that show? And, and Fred would say, Esther, I'm coming, you know. And, and uh, um, um, what, was that? what was that woman's name? That, that, that was Ann Esther, right? And Esther would hit it, chase him around the frying pan. And she said, you old coot. And she was the Christian on the show. And so now people walk around thinking, Christians will hit you in the head with the frying pan. I ain't never hit nobody in the head with the frying pan. Right? I mean, they tell you the, 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 the goofiest things. You know, I believe that as you come in here, you can see true Christianity. I pray that everybody in here can see the love of God in our heart and say, you know, if it weren't for the grace of God, there go I. And we all have a story. We all have a past. Our past doesn't define us, but yet it's a part of us so we never forget where we came from. And if we remember where we came from, we won't walk by some poor soul in the same condition. You know, the Bible says this, or Jesus says this, the person who has been forgiven much will love much. And that's what we are in here. We're a bunch of, of loving people. Any given Sunday, I can look out there and see lives that were changed by the power of God. I can see you today. I can see people's lives who at one time they tried to take their own life. Now I can see them thriving and serving God and, and healed up. I can see people that were addicted to drugs and alcohol and just run into the ground. I can see them healed and delivered. I can see marriages that were going way south put back together. I can see people in here that were on so much depression, things, and just so depressed they couldn't even function, and I see them now serving and laughing and loving God. You are the miracles. You have a testimony. You have a, a, a history with God. And when you share that testimony, the Hebrews believe as you share your testimony, it'll bring the same power back around again to deliver that person you're talking to. How valuable is a soul? People are valuable, are they not? And we can, we can change lives. So turn to, real quick here, let's turn to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. 
And while you're turning there, um, I, I, I always think, of, when I talk about, along this subject, I think of a, uh, what a Sister Denise said one time. She was, she was getting ready to, uh, Sister Denise Musgrave, getting ready to speak for the uh, missions crew. Uh, we took a team to Bogota, Colombia, and part of their assignment was to get up in front of the church and say something. And uh, she was having a hard time with it one morning. And, uh, she's, and, and the Lord told her two things. The first thing he said, he said, you're putting too much of yourself into it. Amen. You're putting too much of yourself into it. Don't worry about what people think about you. Just get up there and tell them something good. I think she spoke the, the less amount of time, but I remember everything she said <laughs> pretty much. So it impacted me. How many years ago was that? That was a good while ago. Too many years. We'll be getting back to Columbia. Gary went to Columbia with us for a trip. But, but here's what the Lord told her. He said, he said this. He said, there's good things outside of the box. But you got to go out there and get them. Nobody can bring it in to you. There, you got to go out and, and, and trust the Lord and, and get outside that box. Burn the box. Destroy it. And never say, you know what? I'm never going back to that hiding place that I hid myself in. If you're going to be a good Christian, you got to be vulnerable. And I didn't like being vulnerable. I didn't like, um, I had a lot of fear of failure. And I wanted a lot of people to like me, like unconditionally. Guess what? I have more people that don't like me being a pastor than ever before. Sometimes you just got to tell people no, and that's it for them. But you know what? I have a lot more people that know me and understand me and love me too. And it's a fulfilling life. But look at this. In Quran, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, they're listing off the genealogy, the, the history of, of the Jews. You know, you can cha chase, uh, trace the, the genealogy of Jesus clear back to Adam. That's important because it shows us that Jesus is exactly who he says he is. He is exactly who the word says he is. See, Jesus is a prophetic person or a prophetic God. His life was prophetic. There was over 320 prophecies about Jesus written 400 to 1,500 years before he even came. He fulfilled them all. Written down in the Holy Scriptures. You know what that, that is? That's God saying, look, I put him in my word. I verified him. I told you he was going to come. Now all you need to do is point back to the Scriptures and you can see that he came here by, by my power. I, I bore witness. I let you know who was coming and when he would come. And Jesus filled all those scriptures. And so in chapter 4, they're listing the names of, of the descendants of Judah. Jesus came out of the family of Judah. And then they stop. The only name that they did it for in this whole genealogy, this whole list of names, over 500 names, one man they stopped on. One man. Jabez. And here's, here's what they say about him. This is the Amplified Bible in 1 Chronicles 4, 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, but his mother named him Jabez, saying, because I gave birth to him in pain. And Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would indeed bless me and enlarge my border, enlarge my, my property, and that your hand would be, would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil so that it does not hurt me. And then it says this, God granted his request. A lot of people will say, well, that's a selfish prayer. No, it wasn't selfish because God doesn't answer selfish prayers. And it says that Jabez was more honorable than all of them. Jabez came from a place of pain. And this is the part that I want to get to. How many of you can say, I know pain of this life? I, I, I came from a place, of, a place of pain. See, his mother named him pain, or he will, he causes pain, or he will cause pain. That was his name. In the Hebrew culture, that was, if you named a child, it was also a prophecy. Can you imagine getting started out in life like that? Your own mother says he will cause pain. But yet Jabez loved God. And basically this prayer was, God, I want to be more and I want to do more for the kingdom of God. I, I, I want to, I want to uh, just glorify you here on this earth. Enlarge my border. Enlarge my property. I want to, I want to just honor you beyond my own ability. God gave it to him. 
I see us in that ship, that boat. I see us in that. We, we, this church was born out of, of pain. The, the, there's, there's nobody in here that had a silver spoon in their mouth, right? We've been battle-tested in the world. I asked you something. If you haven't fully come out of the world, what are you waiting for? What has the world ever done for you? Why not give God a chance to, to show you just what he created you to be? So Jabez had a strong desire, and we have this desire in here. You know what it was? To live beyond his limits and glorify God with his life. To go outside of the box, to be more and do more for the kingdom of God. I found out that when I finally decided to serve the Lord, I found out this one thing. His dreams for my life were bigger than my own dreams. Amen. And God led me on a nice, easy, loving pace. He didn't tell me I was going to be a pastor as soon as I turned my heart back to him. That would have been too much. <laughs> he let me get down the road a little bit. He let me develop in my faith and let me get to know him and get healed up from the world. And then he just led me along. And then he, then he dropped it in on me. And when he dropped it in on me, I was already, I was in because where was I going to go? I made a commitment to God. God, where you lead me, I will go. What you want me to do, I will do. I'm not going back to the world because the world doesn't have anything for me. And so it took a lot of challenge and a lot of um, uh, just faith to get out there and to trust in the Lord and to, do, and to follow him. And he brought me through every step of the way. Every step of the way. It was sort of like God was, Jesus was bumping me along. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. You know how many times I fell? I'm not talking physical fall. I'm talking about just falling, doing things that I shouldn't do and, and struggling in different struggles along the journey. I can't count them all. See, sometimes people think, well, you're a Christian, so everything's going to be perfect and you'll never make a mistake. Uh, sorry. I don't want to burst your faith bubble. I want you to know that you'll always be a human being, but inside of you, when you become a Christian, you become born again, and God puts his spirit in you, and that's enough to get you through anything. But you can't give up, give up on God. The Bible says put your hands on the plow and don't look back. God says I won't have any pleasure in you if you look back or go back because God wants to bring you to a special place, a blessed place. God wants to heal your marriage. He wants to deliver the sadness out of your soul. Only God can do that. He did it for me. I'm testifying to you because I believe the power of my testimony here can set you free too. I was a, a I needed a lot of work. But, but God never gave up on me. And so if he wasn't giving up on me, I wasn't giving up on him. But now I am the most fulfilled that I could ever imagine. If you live in the world, you'll go so far out there that you won't even know, have a glimpse of what it is God had called you, what it is God called you to do. So it felt like he, Jesus was just bumping me along, bumping me along, just loving tenderly. You know what, you know what the Lord told me to do when I came back to him? Four, 414 Wolf Avenue. Or is it 416? I always get that mixed up. 416. 416 Wolf Avenue. Sitting on my kitchen floor. I said, God, that's it. I want you. I'm not turning back. He came immediately. He told me to do two things right there. You say God will speak to you? I, I want to let you in on something. He's been speaking to you. It's just you're not listening because you're not giving him this. Give him this and he'll talk to you. Or you'll, you'll hear him. And he said, he said this. He said, I want you to start going to church. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, because I was missing a lot of church. And back then, we didn't have all the programs that we have now. My kids were just really, really little. And none of them liked to sit still. None of them. I mean, I, I marvel at these parents today. There's kids come, come in, they just, they sit, just perfect. I don't know, maybe I didn't have the skill or what. Well, my kids were, they were just active. <laughs> and... Uh, I remember one time we went into a, a, a shoe store with, with my youngest daughter, Chloe. Chloe, if she liked a pair of shoes, she would say it fit, even though it was two sizes too small. 
and she'd put up a fit. <laughs> and one day we're like, oh no, Chloe, you know, she's throwing a fit. And then she ends up, she hits, she hits this rack of, of, of shoes and she knocks the whole rack down. I'm like, okay, let's just go. <laughs> Highly, I was easy to embarrass. But God didn't seem to care about that. He said, I'll go anyway. And you know what? Nobody in here cared how my children were acting. In, in church, you know what you have? You have a lot of mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles and people that will help you. And then he said this. He said, I want you to start reading, reading my word. I want you to start giving me time and, and quality time too. Not the time, just the only time you try to read or talk to me is when you go to, go to bed at night. Don't raise your hand on this one. But how many of you have ever started talking to God at night and fell asleep on God? I see a hand. I see a youngster hand. Okay. You can raise your hand if you want. There'll be some mornings I'm like, I wake up and the first thing I think about, did I fall asleep on God? Think about it. I fell asleep on God. You know, the creator of every living thing. The one who knows my name. I'm talking to him. Oh, but you know what? He still loved me. And God said, you know how you can remedy that? Give me some prime time. Give me some prime time and just cut it out for just me and you. Just, just give it to me. Read your Bible. Get, get into the word and I'll reveal myself to you. The very first chapter of the Bible that I went to is, is Jeremiah. Jeremiah is the weeping prophet. And when I went into Jeremiah, I saw for the first time in my life, literally in a such deeper way, I saw God's heart and God's love for people, and I saw how cold-hearted people can be, even towards our God. And so God called me to be, be a pastor, and I just started taking steps of faith. See, it's the natural, right? And the supernatural that comes together to make explosive force for God. Everything didn't change for me overnight. I did come out of a place of pain. I did come out of a place of hurt. A lot of, a lot of just, just, I didn't have much, I don't believe, to offer anybody in the world, but God delivered me. I, I am a Jabez, where I just got tired. You know what I got tired of being? I got, I got tired of being the one that everybody always had to help. I'm thankful for all the help that I got, but I said, Lord, one day I want to be the one that's given out the help too. And God got me to that place. And then when it, when it came time to go to... Um, Go to Oklahoma, I pack my four kids up, big old U-Haul, full size, pulling a car, dad went along with us, dad was in front of us with the truck, and, and uh, I remember, that's a long drive, dad doesn't like to stop over, we, we drove straight through, I think, <laughs> and it was before GPSs, like 18 years ago, maybe they had them, but I didn't have them back then, and uh, so in these big cities, if I lost dad, I'd be like, I'll, drive, I'll end up in California or something. I don't know. I'm just like driving, trying to keep up with him. And dad would say, you got to hit those hills hard. Go down the hill and hit them hard. I'm like, I can't. There's a governor on this thing. It wouldn't let me go over 60 mile an hour. <laughs> and, uh, but when I got out there, I realized that, that even though I was at, at Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, following God's will for my life, there were still a lot of obstacles that needed, I needed to overcome. But you know what? God was there every step of the way. Every step of the way. So we get to our apartment, Quail Hollow Apartments, and uh, I found out something. I learned a lesson that day. They pay people a lot of money to make places look a lot better than what they are. Because <laughs> we pulled in there, and I'm like... This can't be it. The brochure said it had like a, a nice playground area for the kids and, and you know, it was just like a little swing set where everybody walked their dogs and didn't clean up their dogs. It was a terrible mess. And, and I'm just like, just like driving all night. I just want to get to some sleep and I go to get in my apartment and they say, it's not ready yet. We just painted it. I'm following the will of God. What I'm trying to tell you was that, that is that, that Things didn't, didn't just part and things didn't automatically happen. And people say, make way. He's on a mission for God. Make way. No. I had to, I had to go through it. And so dad said, there was an old timer there in, in the Quail Hollow. And he said, I'll show you where you can sleep tonight. 
And dad told me two things. Make sure we can turn around the U-Haul in, in the parking lot and make sure it's nice. Well, I did the first part. I forgot to check the room. The place was called the Canterbury Inn. Inn? Let me just say, don't go to the Canterbury Inn. <laughs> it was a mighty mess. And I told the kids, I said, look, we're all sleeping with their clothes on tonight. And you're not getting under the covers. And here I am fulfilling God's will. I'm on a divine appointment, and I'm at the Canterbury Inn. That's my fault. I should have listened to what Dad said. I could go on and on and on, but I just kept at it. You know what kept me on the path that I am on? And then I'll close with this. I knew, I knew God personally in here. See, he became my best friend. Uh, he, I just, he kept me going. When my mind told me I couldn't do it, my heart told me I could. And God told me I could. And I just kept pressing on and pressing on, and, and, and God just made it, made it happen. Do you, do you know this? And then I'll close with this. God never asks you to do something that you can't do. Does he? Can you read the Bible? Can you pray? Can you go to church? Can you walk in love? Yeah, you can, even though you, think you don't think you can. Right? Can you be nice? You might not want to, but can you? What else is there? Can you not punch your neighbor in the eye? Yeah, you can. Right? He, everything he asks you to do, you can do. And when you do what he says to do, he does what you can't do. And that's when you start to be in Jabez territory where God uses you and inspires you and equips you to go beyond your border to do more for the kingdom of God, to be more and to do more. And that's what this church represents. Amen? That's all I have. Would you rise, please? What time is it? That's not too bad, 11.31. We, we got a lot in in an hour and a half. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to close in prayer, and then we're all going to go out the, the front door and stand um, out in the parking lot where the entrance of the, of, of the Ruth Hain Fellowship Center is, and we're going to cut a ribbon, then we're going to go in and feel free to walk around and, and, and just and, uh, take it all in. We'll, we'll all be over there if you have any questions. Um, that's where the, the bulk of the school is going to be over there, too. So we're excited about that. So when you go in the main entrance of the Fellowship Center, uh, you'll see that the gym entrance is to the right. When you walk in, just walk in and, and just go in pretty deep into the gym so we don't get a bottleneck there. Just walk the whole way in through, and then you can go into the kitchen. We've got a beautiful kitchen, very beautiful kitchen. And, well, the whole place is beautiful. And so um, let me close in prayer, and then we'll go out there. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord God, for each and every person that came. I thank you, Lord God, that, that I pray for them, Lord. I pray, Father, that you keep them safe. And Lord, I pray that they all reach their God-given destiny as well. And now, Lord, as we enter into this, uh, this building, Lord, this precious building that you built for us, Lord, I thank you that we do it with gratitude in our heart. And may this uh, building and may this ministry continue to touch lives, Lord. May we not um, cower in fear, but may we trust you and push out beyond our borders. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we'll see you all out there.